Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here, and I'm very excited to share with you iOS 14.5 developer beta one and all the new changes inside so far. Now, fundamentally, huge change in how you unlock your iPhone with, I'd call it mask ID. So now if you have an Apple Watch, you can enable a new feature which allows you to authenticate with your Apple Watch. This is within your face ID and passcode settings. And basically it's a little less secure, but it gets the overall gist of your face from your eyes when wearing a mask. And now you get the following screen here, unlocking with the Apple Watch and you're through. Pretty reliable, I was surprised, very quick and uh, makes life so, so much easier. Another very cool feature is the fact that you can actually lock your iPhone again from your Apple Watch if you lose contact with it. So Apple thought of everything here. And I actually had a very difficult time getting to 14.5. Apple's servers were being hammered today. One thing I'd like to note is downgrading to 14.4 is not possible at this time. So you are not able to downgrade, be careful updating, but so far so good. Also, if you have sleep mode enabled on the Apple Watch, you're actually gonna have to type in the passcode on your iPhone and dual SIM 5G is finally available. So 5G for both lines simultaneously. And for T-Mobile users, there's another toggle here within voice and data for a standalone 5G signal. So not to toggle between them, but just to sit on 5G. And within podcasts, we have redesigned library and search sections. So new icons, new structuring, and within search, as you can see, very similar to the music app, you have a lot of suggestions here within categories. And 14.5 adds new support for the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, as well as for the Xbox Series X controllers. And within Apple Fitness Plus, you're now able to stream via AirPlay 2 to compatible devices. So now take your workout up a notch with a larger display. And iOS 14.5 introduces the deadline for applications in order to access your tracking info, so they must ask. And within reminders on lists, you can now sort by and by these options here. And the Apple News app sees a redesign. So within the News Plus section, you now have these new uh, tags here and downloaded. There's a new For You tab. You can view all your magazines. Also a new Search tab. So easily search separate from everything. And within your notification settings, you are now able to enter emergency alerts for these two options here, a separate alert for emergency alerts and always deliver. So you can disable those. And there's a lot of smaller features here. So there's a new alert for when your Apple Watch is locked and your iPhone unlocks it. You'll now get a notification style prompt just like that there. Your Apple Watch has been unlocked. And Siri now gets a smaller, more compact interface when using her to type messages or type to Siri. So it takes up less space and doesn't have this prompt down here. And go ahead and click send. Looks a little cleaner. Also, Siri has a new interface for locating friends within Find My. Nice clean little prompt. And uh, yeah, works very well. A few changes within Apple Music. So now in an album, you can actually see the exact day that the album was released. Also, if you're playing a song with a really long title on the lock screen, it'll once again scroll cycle through the text where previously Apple did remove that in iOS 14. Also within the library, there's a new made for you section, which I can see, but I'm not able to access just yet. It needs to build up, but overall we'll just give you some compiled music, your tastes in a very similar interface to this. And a number of changes within the Maps app. Collections have a new interface. So now they uh, look like this one swiped up, slightly restructured, overall cleaner. Also when navigating in the Maps app, there's a new interface here. So no longer do you have an end button. You actually have to click up on this little shortcut menu and within you can click end using the new end button. And the top three shortcuts have been compacted into the add stop button, which features these shortcuts. Also now within messages, when you don't have anything in the text field, the send button is now slightly grayed out. So whether it's green or blue or gray, it will feature this slightly grayed out look meaning there's nothing to send. And there's a new splash screen for the screen time prompt when setting up your iPhone for the first time. And when checking for software updates, after updating to 14.5, you now get this new interface here in the center, which is pretty neat. So it combines it into one page. After it finishes checking for updates, you'll get this prompt here. Uh, overall cleaner interface. You'll find the same thing in the Apple Watch app. So all integrated in the same page. Within the watch app, new navigation icons, all three on the bottom have been replaced. 
Also, the Discover tab is now App Store tab, which is just a shortcut to the Apple Watch section of the actual App Store app. Also within Face Gallery, there are some new faces here, in particular, the Explorer faces. And when setting up the News widget, Topic has replaced Today as the first widget you'll see. And on iPad, now when in horizontal, when updating or booting up, the Apple logo will appear horizontal as well, so it doesn't look off kilter. And also now on the iPad is Emoji Search, matching the iPhone feature, you can finally search for various emojis and get them here. Also within the floating keyboard variant, works just like on the iPhone. Also within 14.5, we might be getting joint Apple Card accounts within the Wallet app, thanks to Steve Moser, who actually found a lot of changes via glyphs in 14.5. So some new sounds for Beats headphones, also the pairing screen when connecting a U1 chip to a iPhone compatible unlocking car. So lots of interesting stuff in here, check his account out. And as far as bug fixes, some people are reporting that the green tint has been fixed in 14.5. Let me know if that's been the case for you. All right guys, and there it is, iOS 14.5. Thanks for watching. A lot of exciting features to look forward to, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future betas. Stay tuned guys, peace.